Hello, Sean. Missed you today. But I have a couple of things I'd like to talk to you, talk through you, with you uh, to, for practicing this coming week. And I know we had a vacation, but I know you pretty well, so I'm guessing you still play the piano over vacation. Not sure what you have ready to play for me, if things are still in the works or you're working on some things particularly. I'm not sure. I should have looked at your guild list before I started the camera, but... What I wanted to do is focus, because we, we're so close to the end of the book, and we've got this last unit we're doing with the one octave arpeggios that we do in one hand. And I know we started that. It looks like we still have one uh, piece that we're missing for Guild. And the third video that you're going to watch today, I have two pieces for you to listen to to see if either of them sound like they might be something interesting. One of them, I think, kind of sounds like you to me, but... I think both of them are pretty great pieces. It's from a composer that I really enjoy a lot and haven't used over the last couple of years. For some reason, I just haven't pulled out his music. So I thought this might be a good time. But I want to just review with you what we had in the lesson book. And I believe I showed you just the right hand one octave arpeggios. And I explained to you that we use the same fingering for the right hand whenever we're doing one octave arpeggios. That exercise, if I just gave you the top of page 60, would have just been working on using that fingering where we switch to the one, two, three. I really like this exercise because it has you play that triad the way we're going to do it in the arpeggio. So you switch from one, three, five to one, two, three, and then you do this. And you can't see my hand, but I am doing what we talked about in the technique book where you're doing the under for the right hand you will do under over that probably isn't going to translate really well if I was sitting this way you'd see it but you'll get it and it reviews it again when you're talking about both on the lesson page at page 60 and it also talks to you again about it in your page 36 in the technique book which I believe we started both of those last time I don't think I talked about the left hand because that takes usually just a little bit longer the exercise they have you do in fact, I think both of the exercises they have you do right now on this first page of the lesson book, Unit 8, and the first page of the technique book, Unit 8, is they're just having you stay on the white keys. But when, when we have left-hand arpeggios, you know sometimes our triads don't have always just white keys. So, for instance, if you were playing a D major triad and you would have a three-finger on a black note, well, if you look at your hand, it makes a lot of sense why we would switch the fingerings for that because it's kind of hard for year four, see how it's a little bit shorter, to be able to get some of those black keys. So this week when you practice those exercises, you're going to practice the 5-4-2-1, which is the way we do arpeggios in the left hand if all of the keys you're playing are white. If perhaps you have a black key, though, I just want to give you this little tidbit of knowledge that eventually we're going to do them this way not this week but you will eventually if it, it's a triad that has a black note in the middle a sharp or flat you're going to switch to use that taller finger just because it's much more comfortable to do in the right hand we're using our three all the time anyway but i'd like you to make sure that if you have not started the left hand exercises on page 60 in your lesson book and 36 in your technique book that you would do the left hand starting this week and make sure that you realize that when we're doing the right hand we go under and over but the left hand is reversed so when you are doing the left hand arpeggios you're going to start and you're going to go over first and then under when you come back down you're going to find that when you do that it feels more comfortable and eventually it just becomes second nature. You just know to do it because you've done it so often. But this week it might take a little extra thinking about that. So don't play them too fast. I know for you that's sometimes a challenge. But we're looking for accuracy. We're looking for trying to get the technique added to this already at the beginning. Um, not just about fingering, but the technique as well, which is over and under and which is under and over. And then... If I did not give you in the technique book, page 37, I would like you to do that too. Hopefully you came to this video lesson with a pencil and your book's ready to go. So, you know, you can always push pause if you need to. Um, but I also would like you to add the arpeggio pattern where you're working your way up with the right hand. And then you're going to do the 
same thing going down with the left hand, but making sure that you're using your one, two, four, or five. This will give you some more practice to be able to do that with the over and the under for the left hand. So assign yourself all of page 60 in your lesson book and all of pages 36 and 37 in your technique book. And then also in your lesson book, I would like you to try the novella. It's a pretty little song. I think you need to probably get your highlighter up before you do it though because you're going to notice, see how it starts in the treble clef and then it goes down to the bass clef and then it still it stays in bass. I felt like there was one other time. I guess you just start in treble but the rest of it's in bass. But it's a pattern. so on. So you've got the arpeggio happening in the left hand, which is good because this is the hand where we're adding this week. If you need to practice that left hand by yourself, by itself, feel free. And in fact, here it gives you the written permission. Bullet dot, first practice the left hand alone. Use the quarter rest to prepare the next arpeggio, which means while you have that break, shift your hand down because you've got some geography. You may want to take your pencil, not a pen, but a pencil, and write in that first left hand starting note is an A, and then the first one is a D. And I think if you get if you figure that you're starting on A, D, G, C, and you're just going down fifths until you get near the end of the piece, and then it changes the pattern a little bit. So add that, and um, I will go ahead and make you the next video.